Hey, thank you very much and good day, good afternoon, everyone. And first of all, uh, many thanks for inviting me to your event. And um, I'm very pleased to be here and sharing some of my views regarding healthcare and where the healthcare is moving in the next couple of years, right? So as I said, Arshad Farhad, I'm the CTO for Healthcare and Life Sciences and Digital Technologies. And apologies, obviously I have to speak in English. I live in the UK. Um, in this session, in the next 30 minutes or so, uh, I plan to discuss three areas. One, number one, where the healthcare organization and the wealth healthcare model is going in the next two to three years. I'm not going to talk about a very long-term future. This is more tours in the next two to three years. So in some countries, in some regions, it has already been adopted. And in some countries, obviously, we are seeing the adoption of that. The second area which I'm going to focus is some of the challenges that healthcare organizations are facing uh, since the pandemic has sort of come to an end, right? In majority of the countries, we are seeing that we are coming out of the pandemic. But once we are coming out of the pandemic, we are seeing some new challenges, how healthcare organizations such as hospitals, clinics, and other healthcare providers are going to deal with that. And uh, finally, uh, I would quickly touch on some of the technology areas where we see that healthcare organization needs to adopt in order to embark or in order to get onto the digital transformation of fit for healthcare, smarter healthcare. So I hope this is going to be interesting and uh, I'm not going to talk anything about like uh, deep technology stuff because I'm gonna keep it quite high level on sea level. So first of all, uh, I just want to share like this, this is something, an aspiration. This is something everyone in the world, whether you go to America, Latin, or uh, Europe or Asia or Asia Pacific, every healthcare organization have sort of a dream or set of, set of goal to achieve this setup in the next couple of years, right? So obviously what we are talking about is a DNA profile or DNA sequencing, but this is not just, just the end of it, right? This is just one area. What we need to think about it, what I'm trying to explain here is, what this will provide to the healthcare organization, right? Which I will come to that in a second, but this is what we are achieving by striving towards. If you think about how the current healthcare model currently works, right? So think about when you go and see your doctor, when you go and see your clinicians, or when you go to visit hospital. As we stand now at this point in time in 2022, in most cases, if I have a symptom or if I have a problem, for example, if I have a pain in my stomach or if I have something wrong with my eyes, then I go and see my doctor or if then I go and see hospital to treat that sickness, right? So this is more of a reactive approach, like something happens and then I go and see my clinicians to look after or to treat that symptom. So at the at this point in time, we are we are really living in a reactive healthcare system. And according to a latest research, that ninety eight thousand deaths in the last five years could have been prevented if there was a more preventive approach to that. So what I mean by preventive approach is very simple, right? Like, you know, we are technologists here, more majority of them, right? And we would love to see, for example, if you are running your virtual machine, if you're running your storage, you would love to see that something is going to go down, but before you get a notification. So this is more proactive, right? So the same manner, healthcare organization or healthcare industry is moving towards more proactive healthcare model that we would know before something happens to me. For example, uh, maybe in the next five years, uh, through certain tests, certain DNA profiling, I would come to know 
that yes, in a couple of years time or in a lifetime of my life, I would come across some cardiovascular disease, yeah. or maybe I would I would come across some um, hypertension in my life. So all these sort of preventive thing, if you know in advance, then we would be able to treat that symptoms first of all in advance and much better. And as I said here, these 98,000 deaths could have been avoided or could have been prevented. So this is what we are trying to achieve. This is what we're trying to strive towards in the next healthcare model. So how, what, what is, what is, how is it going to be achieved, right? So in simple words, right, these are the four Ps. Like if you talk about healthcare, these are the four P4s we talk about, right? Predictive medicine, preventive medicine, personalized medicine, and participatory medicine. So these are the core and the foundation or the fundamental of modern healthcare, which everyone globally, not only in Latin, not only in North, not only in Europe, the globally, all the healthcare organizations are looking to adopt these four. And these are going to be the foundation pillar for the more for the modern healthcare digital delivery. Okay. So let's go through one by one what does this mean? But just keep one thing in mind through all these four P's, whether productive, whether pre preventive, we are trying to achieve the same, which is we want to treat patient before a symptom happen or before anything happens. In simple word, we want to treat a patient before, for example, um, heart attack happens in simple words, or a stroke can strike a patient. So we want to treat patient before something happens. This is what we're driving. And in order to achieve that, these are the four pillars that needs to happen. So these are medical term, but at the same time, we are technologists here, right? We work in the IT. So how are we going to achieve this P4s? I'm going to discuss momentarily after this slide. So predictive medicine is very simple. Predictive medicine is, for example, everyone these days, we use smartwatches, Fitbits, those sort of, or Apple watches, and we are collecting data like heartbeats, uh, pulse, oxygen meter, those sort of things, right? These are individual figures, individual elements. What we are going to do with this data is to use that data in an artificial intelligence machine learning platform to predict what is going to happen to this body as a result of certain things. For example, I get a reading of 90 or 80 heartbeat per minute, right? So as and I combining this result with some other parameters such as perpetrations, such as um, oxygen meters, those sort of things. It may say that in the next 15 minutes, I may have a headache. I may feel something else. So this is what we're trying to do to the help of predictive medicine. So we would predict a condition before it happens with the help from a data. So this is what we're trying to achieve. So a uh, patient would be able to, we would be able to treat patient before something happens. Next is preventive medicine. Very similar. In the preventive medicine, what we are trying to achieve is every human body or every human person has a distinctive DNA profile. In a DNA profile of a human, for example, myself, for example, yours, for example, billions of other people, they are all unique. They're like a pattern, right? So a pattern protein pattern in the form of that you can predict or you can see what are the anomaly in those patterns. And with the help of those anomaly, you can see, you can say that that patient or that person may come across certain condition within the lifespan. So this is what preventive medicine is. You know, the first slide I showed to you, like we want every newborn to have a DNA sequencing done. So once we have the DNA sequencing done, then we would know the blueprint of the body of that human, of that person. And when we know the blueprint of the body of that person, then we would be able to say like, okay, you may be, you may be needing something, this sort of medicine in your life. So this is what we're talking about preventive medicine. So we would be able to prevent certain conditions before then. 
personalized medicine, and this is very interesting, right? I'll give you one uh, research example. So we, everyone, a majority of us have headache or pain in the body, and we take some painkillers, whether brufin or whether paracetamol, something generic, right? So these medicine are made from a general formula, right? And they have a general composition that in a paracetamol or brufin, you have that amount of calcium, that amount of uh, pedamine, you amount, that amount of that, right? Every human body is different, as I've just explained. So the way the medicine react to our body is different for different individuals. So for example, for me, that composition of paracetamol or brufin may be only effective for 15 to 20%. For some people, it may be effective for 30 to 40%. For some people, it may not be effective at all. You know, you may have heard that I have taken a painkiller, but it's not doing anything, it's not helping me. So basically that general formula is not helping those patients, right? So think about, you know, we all wear suits, right? There are two types of suits you can buy. You can go to the supermarket or you can go to the shop and you can buy it for like 38 medium or 38 long or 38 small of your size. But that size is a generic uh, size for a body, but everybody is different. And the other way you can buy a suit is you go to a tailoring shop, you choose a cloth material, and then you give your body measurement and that suit would be tailored or that should be would be made for your body. So exactly this is what the personalized medicine is. That a medicines or drugs would be made according to your body composition. So this is a this is a general research that a general medicine is 30 to 40 percent effective for our body in this point in time. But when we use personalized medicine, that a medicine which is built for my body, which is tailored for my body, that would be effective nearly around 90%. So now you can think about, like we are still happy that we take medicine, it works, sometimes it takes longer, but it still works. Now think about, you'll be taking a medicine which would be 90% efficacy or 90% effective. So again, that would be very, very effective for the body. And finally, participatory medicine. In a participatory medicine, it's like an extension of your relationship between you and your doctor or your clinician. It's not just one way. So in a participatory medicine, you would have sort of form a relationship with your clinicians and you discuss your dietary plans, you discuss with your personalized medicine, you discuss with your preventive medicine, and you come to a conclusion with, that, with a healthcare plan. So this was participatory medicine. So this is what we are looking, or this is what the healthcare organizations are looking to achieve in the next couple of years, right? Again, I said next couple of years, it doesn't mean five to 10 years, I'm talking more three to four years. Right, okay, so a very quickly, very summary. So currently we are doing reactive medicine. So something happens, then we go and see. But in the next, sorry, in, in the coming world is going to be predictive. At the moment, it's a provider center. It's, it is based on what hospitals like to see. But in the coming world, is more towards a patient-centric, what patient wants, basically, right? One thing which has changed as a result of pandemic, uh, I think this is also um, as well, like, especially at some age group, like slightly younger age group, we now want our healthcare organizations, such as hospitals, to provide some sort of digital experience for us. Like we would expect that we would rather than going to the hospital, I may have a virtual appointment. I may have my healthcare data on my phone or on my computer so I can see what's happening. So these expectations have changed and these are going to be staying. Other thing is individual expertise. At the moment you go and see your doctor, or your clinician, and with his experience, he'll tell you, you may have certain disease. But I think now we have seen that we have seen the adoption of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and these tools, AI and machine learning, are going to play a wider role in the next healthcare. 
again, it's not five, 10 years, I'm talking two, three years. One thing to be very clear here, we are not going to replace the doctors or AI is not going to replace the doctor. AI or machine learning or deep learning are there to help the doctors to make more their decision more accurate. So they are acting as a helping tool rather than a replacing tool. And finally, the healthcare experience that would be giving to us or to the patient is more differentiated. It's not just like one single thing, you go and get it. No, it will be personalized for you. But think about the same thing I said before, like you have, you will have more tailored fit suit you'll be wearing rather than buying a certain size suit. So this is what we are going and this is what the healthcare looks like. So what technology and what areas, who is, what is going to enable these P4, predictive, preventive, personalized and preventive? So these are some of the foundation element, what we are seeing that healthcare providers such as hospitals and universities are investing in order to achieve those P4, the preventive medicine or personalized medicine. AI is going to play a huge role and it is there to stay. We have seen how AI and machine learning has helped us in the last two years during the pandemic. Like, I don't need to tell you, normally a vaccine manufacturing or vaccine discovery is a 10 years process. We had vaccine in 12 months and AI had made that possible. Genomic sequencing and precision medicine. Precision medicine, this is again, is will be enabled by genome sequencing. So, uh, you know, the first slide is showing you, this is like a building block of what we're trying to do. So every person, every people who, where organization can afford will have genomic sequencing done. Imaging, like normally you may have a PAX, VNA, these are going to stay, obviously, you're not saying they're going anywhere, but we're going to have a next generation of PAX and VNA where you will be coming across 3D imaging. And in some instance, you will be coming across metaverse sort of features, a virtual reality, augmented reality. So all these are going to be part of imaging as well. Digital pathology, again, the adoption of digital pathology is in some countries is quite high and in some countries it's low. But digital pathology is also going to be a foundation member for achieving a preventive medicine in the healthcare. So it's just like, what is, what is a digital pathology? So I, let me quickly explain. So at the moment, you have your, your sample, such as your tissue or your uh, blood sample, which is on a glass slide. And that glass slide goes under a microscope and the pathologist view through a microscope and say, okay, this composition or this anomaly, and that could be related to certain type of cancer or it could be certain type of disease, whatever. So this is how the pathology is done. In a digital pathology, you digitize the slide. You basically create a digital image of that pathology slide. So you can view in the screen, in the computer screen, and you can apply machine learning and AI on top of that medical imaging digital pathology to assess the pathologist to make their decision more accurate. So this is what the digital pathology is. Connected healthcare, right? So uh, in a connected healthcare, mainly we're talking about the virtual care, right? So uh, again, uh, virtual care, telemedicine, telehealth, this is something we have been talking for the last 10 years, right? But the adoption of these technology hasn't been great because of a number of reasons, security, um, people are not IT literate, generation gap, number of reasons. But in the last two years, we have seen the value and benefit of virtual care. So I think virtual care is going to play a wider role in the next new generation of healthcare. We would expect to have certain treatment done. And for example, there's a treatment called dialysis. In a dialysis, you have your blood clean, every after a certain period of time. For some people, it is three days. For some people, it is seven days. For some patients, it is two weeks, like depending how sick you are, right? Because your body is not able to clean the blood. So that's why you have to use machine to get it clean. So you have to go to a certain place to get it clean. 
nowadays we have seen that hospital are giving them, giving these patients a remote kit so they can take it to home and they can perform the dialysis at home. At the same time, these dialysis units are connected with number of sensors like IoT devices, medical sensors, and they are collecting data in real time and sending it to the patient so they can see what is happening. And if something happens wrong, they ring the patient and say, hey, can you please come in and we need to look at you closely. So it's not just we will hospital will give you the devices and just do it home. No, they will keep a close eye on that using the data which has been connected through IoT devices, medical sensors, and those sort of things. So that basically forms a, a network of devices, and that's what we call connected healthcare. So in a connected healthcare setup, all medical sensors, medical equipments, and different solutions that we have are going to be connected with each other and provide a real-time data that can be used to treat a patient. Virtual reality, artificial reality, I've discussed. And finally, robotics, right? Robotics is something being used uh, already, but we will see more and more adoption of robotics in future. For example, I have seen recently that um, a long distance surgery has been performed. So doctor or a surgeon sitting in Australia and he's performing a surgery through internet, a patient which is lying on a bed in Asia, Asia Pacific and China in that region. Right, so a robot was performing the surgery, but the console of the robot is was with the surgeon who is in the Australia. So now you can think about for some very specialized surgeries or specialized care, which cannot be able to perform within a country. So rather than traveling to another country, you can achieve through this robotics or remote care. So now you can see how all these things going to connect and performed a new next new for normal, which is a connected healthcare. The foundation of that will be enabled by advanced analytics, precision medicine, such as genome sequencing, digital pathology are going to be bedrock of that, and all the devices are going to be connected. And combining all of this, the research paper has said the efficiency of the healthcare is going to be twice, double than what is currently now. Now you can think about what is going to be the future of healthcare. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, type on the chat and I'm more than happy to answer, right? Uh, a very interesting slide I've come across, so I thought I'd share with you, right? In the next 12 months, right, these are the three main, uh, I would say, a prize or accolades that healthcare vertical has won. In the last 12 months, healthcare vertical has the highest number of data growth, right? It's not finance, it's not Google, it's not anything else. It's the healthcare who have, and I think we know the reason. Think about your x-ray being done in five years ago, right? The amount of the x-ray data used to be in megabytes, now it's in gigabytes. We are introducing more and more new modalities like digital pathology, the size of the images are now in gigabytes. Genomic sequencing, digital mm -hmm. pathology, AI. So this has multiplied the amount of data that we're creating. So, and data is not just keeping the data stagnant, but also running AI and machine learning to get meaningful information. And as I said before, the future of healthcare is a predictive. And how are we gonna do the prediction? With the utilization of the data. So that's the data which is coming from. Second, second area, in the last 12 months, Healthcare Vertical has adopted the most number of AI tools. It's not finance, it's not retail, it's not manufacturing, it's AI. One simple example I'll give you, which possibly resonate to you as well. During the COVID, when it was at the peak pandemic, hospitals have used AI to detect COVID-related symptoms using X-ray or CT scans, right? So it's just one example. There are thousands of other use cases. AI models have been used to detect length of stay of a patient in a hospital. AI models have been used to predict in a hospital setup if a patient is about to fall from the bed, those sort of things. AI tools, models have been used 
to detect how well a surgery has been performed and how long this patient is going to stay in the hospital. AI tools have been used with the help from your camera screen, camera, uh, phone camera, able to see your blood pressure, your uh, heartbeat, all these things. So now you can see AI is everywhere. And in healthcare, we have literally absorbed all these things. And in the future, it's going to have more and more. And finally, this is not something to be proud of, but again, uh, uh, this has happened. Healthcare vertical or healthcare hospitals have seen the largest number of cyber attacks, right? And I think we know the reason because the nature of the data we deal in the healthcare, it attracts cyber attackers and, and attackers to, uh, to be the target. Um, and you know, the worst can happen. Uh, I recently have come across in Germany, a person died because there was a cyber attack happened in the hospital. All the hospital system were down. That patient has to move from one hospital to another hospital. And during the movement, the patient lost his life. So, you know, the worst can happen during the cyber attack, a person can die. So the consequences are immense, are worst. But again, this is something we have to deal with. And I think the more and more data we are creating, we're gonna have more and more this security risk. So we have to be uh, uh, prepared for that. So how technology is going to enable, right? So you must be thinking for so far, uh, we have discussed more about where the healthcare is going. So these are the next, uh, these six areas we have seen the going to be the foundation of the digital healthcare or fit for purpose healthcare edge. Like, as I said, the, the typical way of treating patient is to bring all the patient into the hospital, but that model is going, or that more model is going to reduce. What we see here in the future is people or patient will be treated where maybe at home, maybe outside the hospital. Right, so this is where the edge healthcare come in, and virtual health, clinical health. This is what's going to enable it. Telehealth is very similar, right? Like the concept of telehealth, we have been talking for a long time, right? But this is something now is materializing. AI, we discuss about it, is absolutely the bottom, absolutely the foundation of that. Data management, like again in the previous slide, we saw that healthcare are generating more data than anyone else but you need to manage it, right? You cannot just leave the data where they are. So data management is going to be critical for healthcare. 5G, in those countries where the 5G has been rolled out, healthcare are going to make a massive use of that 5G technology. You know, the example I gave you about uh, the robotic surgery performed different, different region, different continent, that was happened through 5G. And finally, healthcare organization have to look very closely into the security of that. And finally, for myself, uh, is how, what we are doing, how Dell Technologies are enabling that <clears throat> transformation evolution of healthcare. We drive all our solution, <coughs> excuse me, for the modern platform into these five key pillars, right? Modernized technology, connected workforce, virtual health, personalized health, and secure care. So in a modernized technology, this is like your fundamental of your data center. Adoption of cloud, adoption of your modern platform for your EMR, for your PACS, for your digital pathology, all these systems. So this is all about platform, right? You cannot achieve your digital transformation in healthcare if your platform is not right. So this is the basics. Next is your connected workforce. You know, I've just mentioned that the future of healthcare is not just hospitals. It's a mix of hospital and outside hospital. So in that scenario, you've got to have your different element connected to each other, IoT devices, your smartphones, your smart cameras, your uh, AR, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. These are all need to be connected to the whole healthcare system to perform, to deliver the digital healthcare solution. Virtual health, I discussed about it. Personalized health, I mentioned about genomic sequencing, digital pathology, VNA, precision diagnostic, all these things, we Dell have a solution for each and every of them. You may think Dell 
is more of an infrastructure solution provider like servers, storage. Yes, we do. But at the same time, I think you said at the introduction that I lead a practice. And during the practice for the healthcare, this is what we focus on. And finally, each and every pillar, whether it's a modernized technology, whether it's a connected workforce, whether it's a virtual health, whether it's a personalized health, each and every element is creating a data. It means we have to protect the data. So we need to have a robust ecosystem of data protection or data security. And this is what we discuss in the secure care. So, uh, so, so ladies and gentlemen, so this is just to give you an overview of what Dell capabilities and how do we see as how the healthcare is progressing at the beginning. And where we want to get to, again, I go back to my first slide, is this is what we want to do. This is what healthcare organization would try to achieve, that when, when a child is born, before he leaves the hospital, he would have his DNA sequencing done, and we know that what that baby boy or baby, baby girl com body composition is made up of, and what anomaly can he or she can face in the future of the life. So we will be able to treat before something can happen. So this is the future what we're talking about. I stop here. If you have any questions and observations, I'm more than happy to take some questions. Thank you very much.